Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we're going to talk about hash sets in C Sharp. So I'm pretty sure that you have already heard about hash sets but maybe you are not sure why to use them and when to use them and what are the benefits and differences in comparison to lists, dictionaries and arrays for example. So here on screen I created a hash set of type string, so it's kind of generic, right? You can put in whatever data type you like. Then you just set up a new hash set and then you can call the default methods that we have like add, remove, clear and so on. We have some more nice methods we will see by the end of the video, so definitely make sure to stick around until the very end. And below that I got a list of type string including the same elements and the array also with five elements including the same hobbies. So now, where is the actual difference? So, right here you can see that hash set, that we have five elements that we're going to add, and we have tennis as a duplicate, right? So, we have that two times. Well, for the list and for, this, uh, for the array, that doesn't really matter. So that at the end, the list will have five elements, football, tennis, golf, hiking, tennis, and the array will have five elements, football, tennis, golf, hiking, tennis, but the hash set on the other side will only have four. So we have football, tennis, golf and hiking. The last tennis right here is not getting at it because it's a duplicate and that's just not possible by the hash set's nature. For example, the array, as you already know, you can just get any value from the array using an index. Now on the other side, for the hash set, that's not possible. A hash set saves elements by generating a hash value. Now, football has its own hash value, tennis has its own hash, golf and hiking too. For tennis and for the second tennis that we have right here, the hash will exactly be the same and in that way it's just simply not possible that the hash set can save any kind of duplicates because tennis, if it's written in the exact same way and all of that, it will generate the exact same hash. Now for the array it doesn't really matter because it's just saved by the index. So each new element will get a new index and that's how you can access it. Now what's the benefit of the hash set? Well, since we are using hashes, we are able to, well, get values way quicker. So we can grab elements from the hash set faster in comparison to lists or arrays. And those are the two main reasons why you should use them and then we will dig deeper into how you can use them. So reason number one is Hash sets do not store any kind of duplicates and that's very handy and we will just discover why in a second. Now, secondly, hash sets are faster than arrays, for example. So if you have to search specific values in collections, hash sets may become a very nice way to increase your performance. Now, before we continue, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming .NET related videos and like this video if you already have learned something new. And if you are a C-Shop developer who's serious about his career, make sure to check out our C-Shop Progress Academy. It's a self-paced online course, which turns you into a full-stack C-Sharp developer by learning in-depth ASP.NET, Angular, unit testing, and C-Shop software design patterns. So we offer a 14-day money-back guarantee. So if you are not fully satisfied, you can simply get your money back, no questions asked. And I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Sharp developer to land your first job or to earn more money as an employed software engineer. You can find the link for the C-Sharp Progress Academy in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Alrighty, so now let's take a look at three very important examples to fully understand the hash set. So let me just replace the code right here with something else. Alrighty, so here we got a list. Uh, we have again some hobbies and yeah, we have a lot of duplicates, right? Football, football, tennis, tennis, hiking, hiking. Let's just assume that you query data from your database and you are searching for, let's say, the hobbies of all of your users, right? So chances are very, very high that a lot of them have, well, entered the same values. I'm absolutely sure that more than one person in the world likes football, right? So in that scenario, we have a lot of duplicated values, but maybe since you want to populate a dropdown, for example, by what your typical users are writing down, you are not interested in showing them football, 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 hiking, 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 golf, 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 no. So in that way, you wanna filter it out, right? So a very fast way on how you can filter a list, right? Keep in mind, that's a list right here, is to create the hash set from that list and well, as I said, by its nature, the hash set will automatically 
remove all the duplicated values. So we can do that by simply creating a hash set, the same data type, which is string in that scenario. You can give it like a name, like unique hobbies. And we simply create a new hash set of type string. And in the parentheses afterwards, we can simply put in the collection. So that list, for example, we put that in here, hobbies list. There we go. There we have it. That's exactly what we have to do. Let's save it right here. Now let me set a breakpoint right here. Let's start the application and let's discover what values the unique hobbies hash set now contains. Alrighty, so the breakpoint stopped. Now, if I hover above unique hobbies, you can see we got count four, football, tennis, golf, and hiking, right? So a lot of values got removed, right? Because they are duplicated. Awesome. So in that scenario, you don't have to care about adding link uh, just in order to create any kind of filtering for your list. No, you can simply create a hash set, which is even faster and which you can use afterwards to write code, which has better performance. Awesome. So let me just shut that down. So we got like golf and whatever. We can use our hash set now, unique hobbies dot and take a look at the methods that we have. We can check for contains. And this is well what you want to use, let's say golf, for example, right? Golf, there we go. That's like a very fast way on how you can get a value from a hash set in comparison on how you could get it from an array where you would have to well search through the entire array or from a list where this is a way more performance consuming code. So contains right here is way quicker than on the list, for example. Now there are two more methods that you should definitely know about when you want to use a hash set. So let me just again replace the code on screen. Here we got two hash sets, right? So no lists, only hash sets. We got a hash set, hobbies A, and we have a hash set, hobbies B. We got football, tennis and golf in the first one and hiking and golf in the second one. So golf is duplicate, just pay attention on that. Now we are able to just, well, join them together so that we in the end have like one hash set which contains all the values without duplicates. So let's say you're just grabbing the information about the hobbies from one database right here and the hobbies from other users, maybe of a different application or just like from a different database here. Now you're interested in creating one list which contains all the hobbies without and now you're interested in creating one collection which contains all the hobbies without any duplicates. Now in that scenario, you could take like the first hash set, so hobbies A, and then you would just say dot union with. So let's say we are combining them. And again, since the hash set is not allowing duplicates, we can simply say we want to combine hobbies A with hobbies B. And in that way, if we just set a breakpoint again, but let me just bring that a little bit closer here. If I just start the application, you can see afterwards that hobbies now will contain four elements instead of three because they got combined and the duplicates got automatically removed. So let me just see now the breakpoint stopped the application. If I hover above hobbies A, you can see count is four. We got football, tennis, golf and hiking. So another very, very nice way. Now, the last one, and that one is quite exciting, is the possibility to create intersections with hash sets. So a lot of, well, nowadays, a lot of companies for sure are interested in creating or in understanding intersections between different data sets, right? So in that way, we could simply say, okay, if I have people from Facebook right here, right, just, just an example, and here on Hobbies B, those people are from Instagram, any kind of data interested company could say like, okay, so where are the similarities between both of them? All of them have hobbies, but do Facebook users have the same hobbies as the ones on Instagram? And if so, which ones are those? So in that way, we could simply replace that union with, with intersect with. So we intersect hobbies A and hobbies B and the intersected values are golf in that scenario. So we are only interested in the, well, duplicated values, right? So let's start that application again. Let's take a look to find the intersection between both collections right here. So again, the breakpoint stopped the application. Let me hover above hobbies A because that's the one that we're using, right? You can now see if I hover above it, we got one item, which is golf. Okay, so that's the intersection. And as I said, hash sets are super fast. They are very performant. And even if you work with large data sets, you should even more consider using hash sets every now and then instead of your default list or array. Awesome, now you know the benefits and how to use them. You know the most important methods 
And if you like this video and if you have learned something new, subscribe to our channel because I'm sure that you are interested in becoming a better C-Shop and .NET developer. And we can help you with that. So smash that like button and subscribe button right now. Come back in the next video and definitely make sure to check out our C-Shop Progress Academy. So thanks for watching and see you next time.